heated insoles versus heated socks. I think there's a clear winner and I'll be back in a moment to tell you why. Hey everybody, welcome back to Geezer Rider. In this video, we're going to contrast uh, or follow up even on heated insoles versus heated socks. If you look at our heated gear series or go to the heated gear playlist, you'll find these covered individually. We mention each of the other items in those videos, but this represents a one year follow up, at least in regard to the heated socks after living with both through several seasons now i've drawn some conclusions and i actually have some corrections to some of the statements or assertions or thoughts that i had previously so let's get right into it right off the bat i'll just tell you i think the heated socks win and i think the heated socks win in a number of categories and almost regardless of manufacturer uh, we're going to address hardwired versions of the heated socks and heated insoles but i really think the same holds true even if you get battery operated devices so saying that the heated socks win let me put an asterisk next to that and that does not mean that the heated insoles are trash or you know throw them away if you don't if you already have them or cancel your order or you know man i'm really in a financial bind and i found these things so cheap why can't i use them so what heated insoles do is provide some heat to your foot specifically they provide heat to the bottom of your foot and that is generally the way it, where it stays and this is kind of the drawback and the reason is when you're wearing heated insoles you're generally wearing a sock of some manner uh, these are a couple of merinos midweight merino wool socks and we'll do a separate update on merino wool uh, in the heated gear series later it's really more of a base layer issue than a heated gear issue um, but merino wool tends to to hold heat so these are fairly thin you're going to wear at least that if not a sock liner along with it so what this is doing is when you have this be part of your your shoe you have to take out your existing insole or should take out your existing insole and put in the heated gear insole you're adding insulation between the source of the heat and the sock well how is how is that bad the assertion that i made in one of the other videos was hey through convection eventually this heat will you know rise and disperse more or less evenly throughout the shoe or the boot and that really won't be a problem and eventually it'll come up through the cuff and let the moisture out and everything what i found in general is that when i have enough sock thickness on to be comfortable the heated insoles really don't provide the same level of heat comfort as the heated socks because the heating elements are positioned that much further away from your foot and through insulation wearing a sock or socks and i wouldn't recommend wearing the thinnest sock you can because the heat is on the bottom of these and that's true of most of the heated socks as well but we'll get to that in a second and your the toe box is going to be fairly cool it's in the category of something is definitely better than nothing and it's not like the difference is that extreme but the other drawback i found is since these are in the bottom of your boot even with a you know mid ankle boot like this you've got this wire coming up on your side and certainly with a with a higher shank boot you've got you know the wire traveling up the length of your leg and that can be a comfort issue over a period of time there's other issues with heated gear and wire routing that can be as comfortable more uncomfortable but we're nitpicking here just trying to give you all the information the other thing is as i said you generally want to take the existing insole out to get a better fit to put in the heated insole these are not orthopedic they're not made by dr shoals or nike or anything like that and they're really made to deliver heat they're fairly thin they don't provide a lot of cushioning so when you get up and walk around two things are happening one is you're not getting a lot of support you're not getting a lot of comfort for a lot of walking around and this may be a first world problem if all you're doing is riding the bike and you get off and you take your boots off the other thing is the wear factor that you're you know marching around with these on and 
they're semi-flexible. The heating elements are encapsulated in a semi-rigid material. So every time you're flexing your foot, and this is extreme, your boot probably doesn't flex that much, but it's stressing those elements inside. Now, granted, this is made by Gerbing, so I guarantee you it's designed to accommodate that. But again, you know, we're, we're nitpicking here. And what has happened is, at least with the hardwired versions of heated insoles and heated socks, the cost differential between the two has dropped pretty significantly as more players are entering the market, especially with the battery operated items entering the market. Uh, another drawback, and we'll just touch on battery here, most all of the battery operated heat insoles put the battery inside the insole. So that is either going to make it artificially thicker. So that's less padding for your foot and more room for the battery to stay. And you're also heating up those batteries because the element has to be next to where the batteries are, but you're also putting weight on there. And I think the jury is still kind of out on, you know, whether after years of use, you know, those lithium batteries might get compromised and you have a little foot fire going on. Uh, it's a little extreme, but I just, I just don't think the comfort level is, is quite there in the heated insole versus the heated sock. And that may be one of the largest deterrents. So we've talked about the, uh, the heated insole. So what makes the heated sock so good in comparison? Well, one is most of the heated socks have the wire come out at least at the ankle position, if not up here near the calf position. In the case of these first gear heated socks we reviewed before. So that's less intrusive going up the side of your leg, especially if your boots fit tight. And that's another thing that we talk about with the, the heated insole. If you put it in on top of your existing insole, you're raising your foot and getting into a more constrained area and it's going to be more uncomfortable. Though we won't, won't beat that to death. The other thing about the heated sock is the, in, the elements are incorporated into the base of the sock. They go most all the way up to the toe area because you, you don't have to have them set back. And why would they be set back in the heated insole? Well, on the heated insole, there's actually trim lines that you may or may not be able to make out in this video where you can trim the edge to fit a smaller shoe size. So the elements can't go all the way out here. They have to stop maybe like here. So that's less heat that's being put up in the toe box. Whereas with the heated sock, you can feel the elements if you go into the store or what have you, or you have a pair, you can feel they, they come up fairly close to the toe box. The other thing is you can put this sock on directly, which I actually don't recommend for um, a variety of reasons. One being sanitary, washing these can be kind of a pain. They have to be hand washed and should be air dried or extremely low heat if you use any heat at all in a dryer. And I would just suggest that you air dry them as much as possible. Put something inside, try to open it up, get airflow through there. The other thing is that if you use a sock liner, that's just a tiny bit of insulation until these come up to full heat. These are very thin and they reduce wear on the inside of the, the sock. And again, it's clean sanitary. You can wear this all day with the sock liner and just take the sock liner out and wash that. Another reason for the sock liner is you may choose to wear, if for nothing else, just for cushioning, you may choose to wear a thin or mid-weight wool sock along with it. And you're like, hey, wait a minute, you just said it with the insoles that wearing a sock was bad. It, it insulates the, the heating elements from your foot. Well, the difference is your foot is inside here with the heating elements, even with a sock liner on, and you're getting all the benefit of that heat, and it is trapped already inside the sock. It's not counting on the shoe, which may have, you know, some airflow, and most of them do, just to help wick moisture out. But then on top of that, for comfort's sake, you can put on a sock in a, on the outside of the, the heated sock and get some cushioning. And also that way, when you get off the bike, your feet don't immediately become cold because the heat source is gone and you don't have on, you know, a, a nice wool sock of some kind. So here's the combination that I'll wear. I will wear the sock liner and these are cheap. These are 
found less than five bucks. Usually they're fully synthetic. Sometimes you can find a combination. It really doesn't matter. This is almost more of a sanitary item than it is anything to do with providing insulation or warmth. It does help and it also does help with wear and tear. Then I put on the, the heated sock and then I put on the, the merino wool sock over top of the heated sock. This I find to be a really good combination. It doesn't add that much bulk to the overall girth of my foot or the uh, height on top of my foot side to side. And that's especially important if you've watched our Tour Master review, these boots run really narrow. These are actually considered a wide. I don't know what, on what planet these are wide. My foot is wide, but not that wide, and they fit tight in here. So in a boot like this, you can't add layers and layers. Like here's, here's a wool sock that's like almost a quarter inch thick. I couldn't wear that in this boot comfortably all day. I would feel pinch points all the time. So this combination works pretty well. So I think the ability to clean and maintain this and the ability and the flexibility to add it in layers and the proximity of your foot to the heat source. And you know, if you've been watching Heat of Gear series, we always emphasize how much power it takes to be comfortable. You can run these on a fairly low setting because of their proximity to your foot and the way the heat is constrained inside the, the sock and the liner that you don't have to have it cranked up and draw tons of power. And you can divert that to other areas that might need more power like your jacket or your gloves or your pants. Another item to consider is when this comes out of the top of the boot, it's more readily routed than the, the heated insole where you have to work when you try and put it on where this is going to be migrated. And again, in a boot without a lot of wiggle room, you know, it's pretty narrow. It's, it's pretty tight. That can, that can be kind of annoying over a long period of time. And remember your feet are moving, you're breaking, you're shifting, etc. So that will add up. And, and again, we realize these are kind of first world problems, but just pointing everything out for you. And again, the price point between the insoles and the heated socks a decent pair which i consider this first gear it's it's a decent pair of socks it's not gerbing but it is um it hasn't failed me and i've been quite comfortable with them so let's put it that way the the price point now even as cheap as these are on sale is within twenty dollars and for an item that you're probably going to keep and use between five to you know, I know people that are wearing 25 year old heated gear, you know, it's, it's worth that extra investment. It's worth waiting until you can afford to get it. The other thing is it is a little bit easier and this is kind of pushing things, but if you're, if it's not quite cold enough now that you need heated uh, footwear, you can pack this and change into uh, a heated sock a little bit easier than you can pack something that's only semi-flexible. I wouldn't advise folding these up. Uh, I would advise keeping them as flat as you can. So you can see where it would make a little more sense to have a heated sock crammed, you know, wadded up and tucked away somewhere on your bike for use later than having the heated insole. And the other problem with using the heated insole alternately, like during the day, I'm not using the heated insole, but it dropped 30 degrees throughout the course of the day and into the evening and now I need heated gear is that during the day you needed an insole in there. So you're going to have to take that out to put this in. Again, we're looking for problems to explain, but these are the differences and, and why I landed where I landed. So I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, please give us a like, a thumbs up if you think we've earned it. And if you'd like to see more of this content and be notified, please hit subscribe and the notification bell. Thanks. Ride safe. Namaste.